You read that title right. Why Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't need to do anything to their prize support. I know that this is going to be an extremely hot take, but please hear me out first. Because I have 16 years of playing this game competitively. This game's done a lot for my life. And I just want to explain my side of things before people get angry in the comments. So please hear me out. That's all I ask before you make a comment calling me an idiot. Because that's probably what my comment section is going to look like. Let's dive on into why the prize support is fine. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host, hopefully with still the most after this video, a real R32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo prize support stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 15, well, almost 1500 ladder. I guess I shouldn't jump the gun because, uh, you know, it might tank my subscriber count after this video. But again, like I said in the intro, please hear me out. So I've talked about many times in the past on this channel how I've been playing this game competitively for 16 years and really I've been playing the game on and off ever since the game came here to North America and something that I've of course many other people have seen as well in the community is that the idea of prize support needing to be better and what's interesting is that Konami actually during the YCS in Sacramento that barely anybody went to which is hilarious and I already made a video about that shameless plug they did a survey <clears throat> excuse me where they said, um, what can we do for prize support? It's kind of weird on how they word it, but it was like, outside of game mats and packs and boxes, stuff like that, what else would you like to see in the prize support? Now, I'm sure plenty of people put on their cash prizing and things like that. But <clears throat> here's what you need to understand. For years, the prize support has been this way. It's just been in different forms. You know, I think back to other prize cards that we've gotten throughout the years, whether it's Minerva, Dig Vorzak, Blood Melfist, if you want to go really far back, Dark End Dragon, which I think, in my humble opinion, to be honest, I feel like Dark End Dragon is the perfect example of a prize card that is good in its own right, but isn't broken. Like, if you read the effect of Dark and Dragon and you look at when it came out, nobody played it. Even if they had the card, like maybe they played it just to flex, but were you really going to play that over a Stardust Dragon or a Red Dragon Archfiend? Probably not. But besides the point, the thing is, is that people have said throughout the years, price support needs to be better. Price support needs to change. And I agree that especially when you look at it from the side event point of view, that's insane. Like when I went to YCS Indianapolis this year, there were more people over at the side event side of the, the venue, which was on the completely opposite side from the like regular, you know, competitive side of the tournament. There were more people over there after round two than there were in the main event because more people wanted to play in side events, which is insane. Those uncut sheets being worth a lot of money is bonkers and people want to play for those things. With Kazuki Takahashi not wanting cash prizes in the game, look... As bad of a company as Konami is, between everything that they did with the Metal Gear Solid series, and uh, his name escapes me at this point, and I'm sorry, um, Kojima, Kojima, God, I was going to get crucified in the comments if I couldn't remember that. Between everything that they did with Kojima, between everything that they've done with their pachinko machines, between everything that they've done with Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, even outside of Yu-Gi-Oh with the uh, football, but not American football, soccer series, and, and all that stuff they're they're not a good company hell they've spied on their employees in the past there's a lot of things that they've done wrong whether you're looking at the japanese side or the american half of the company i get where all of the anger comes from i've seen this company work throughout the years being in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. but as someone who has played this game competitively for so many years and seen the game change throughout the years Getting better prize support in the form of monetary value is not going to happen. And if you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for those reasons, I feel like you're playing the wrong card game. Because that's not what Yu-Gi-Oh! has been defined to be. And I'm going to tell a story that I've probably told at least 10 different times on this channel, but please hear me out. Because this is one of the driving stories that makes me not want to have cash prizes in the game because I don't want these type of people playing a game that I love. 
there is a situation at a locals um, in St. Augustine, Florida, many years ago, and I'm hearing this secondhand from a good friend of mine, but why would he have any reason to lie to me about the situation? Because the player wasn't banned from the locals after this, which I don't know why or how. But there was this kid. He had a little bit of a lisp. Cool kid. I don't think he like he had a lot of friends in school growing up. Anyway, I'm not going to rehash the whole story. But long story short, he was becoming better and better and better, getting slowly better at the game. And one day he gets beat by a player we're going to call Mr. Douchebag. And Mr. Douchebag allegedly calls him a homophobic slur use your imagination, and that he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh. The kid proceeded to go home crying that day to his parents, and I never saw him again. I still don't know where he's at to this day. Do you want players like that, more players uh, like that, playing this card game where I understand that that's the 1% of the 1% of the 1% who play this fucking game that are douchebags like that? But do you want more people like that at events because there's $10,000 on the fucking line if you win a 915-man YCS, which is just a, a small regional in California? I don't want that in this game. <clears throat> and it would honestly make me quit the game if I ran into more people like that. Another story that I've told on the channel multiple times. YCS Orlando 2010. My opponent got arrested probably for stealing cards. Like six cops surrounded the table and I put my hands up in the air like I was about to get arrested because my 13-year-old ass didn't know what was going on and I got scared. Another situation. I had a player slow playing me and I got ready to call a judge before he continued playing saying, oh, we need to stop play. The judge said that they were going to make an announcement near the end of the round. When the fuck have you ever been to an event where a judge has made an announcement at the end of the round or near the end of the round? And as soon as I was getting ready to call a judge, I said, he didn't make an announcement. If you don't play, I'm going to call a judge. And then he kept playing. These type of players piss me off in this game. Another example that I'll give. Remember when I got 22nd place or 26, whatever it was, with Brandon Eldelich, the 60-card pile that played Mystic Mind and stuff a couple years ago? Uh, for those of you new to the channel, you should go check out that deck profile. It was a fun time. Uh, but there was a player a couple seats down for me where every time he played a card, his opponent would go like this. Like he was having a stroke. So finally, his opponent said, I don't know what you're trying to do, but you're starting to piss me off. And the guy just shrugs his shoulders and goes, call a judge. Why do we need more toxic people like that in this game? I don't understand why this is okay. And I feel like having cash prizing would only <clears throat> make that situation larger. It would only uh, put oil or, I guess, gasoline on the fire, so to speak. And there was a comment that someone had said on one of my videos when I talked about this previously. who said, look, we're all adults. We can act adults about this. And I agree with that sentiment. The issue is not everybody's like that. Some people have issues up here. Some people are just big man children neckbeards who play this game because they want to fill out their fucking resume because you're not playing for anything, which is fine. Because look, at the end of the day, I play for a resume. But when you get these weird ass neckbeards who like have a fucking iron mouse and filling and body pillow and get pissed when they can't get their max rarity quarter century fiendsmith engine like we don't need cringe toxic players like that in this game like i don't understand why people think it's okay to act like an ass like this at events and i've made <clears throat> i guess an ass of myself in the past i mean hell i remember one time i got stalled out by some douchebag player at another florida regional and i broke my thumb like I told that story on the channel before. I got pissed because he slow played me with kind of activating spells. And a judge at that regional commented on my video and said, I know exactly what player you're talking about because I wasn't going to mention them by name. You can actually see my sprite deck profile about that where I talk about that. So the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that I get that people are upset about the prize support, but there's other ways that they can go about it besides cash, right? They could do uncut sheets of quarter centuries uncut sheet of starlights they can give and i think that this is a really cool idea what someone commented on my video about ycs sacramento having low attendance numbers someone said that the prize card should be an alt art but like a full alt art of a card that's coming out in a future set how cool would that be imagine if we have full alt arts like not just the picture but like a full art card and it's an alt art of even something like blue eyes Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl. Uh, what if you could get a full art, alternate art version of like a Malice card before it came out? And like, what if that card was legal? 
So you have one Malice card that's legal for play if you get that prize card. Obviously, you wouldn't want to give them like a super broken Malice card where like just that one card can make a deck crazy. You don't want Crush Card or Gold Stark level uh, vibes or Minerva, but you get my point. That would be really, really cool. What if you got a stainless steel, I don't know, Egyptian God card set for winning a YCS? That would be cool. And it's technically not cash prizing, but you can sell it for cash. So, look, I again, these types of stories is what makes me really not have a lot of faith in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Again, it's the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. And luckily, I've been blessed to be in a community. Shout out to the Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Where I would say like 99.99% of the people are really cool. And honestly, the 0.1% probably don't even come to locals on a regular basis. And the 0.1% fall into the very small category of people that I meet at regionals and YCSs who are just douches. And like I'll never see them again in my life. When it comes to going to locals, oh my god. I love my community because everybody's just chill. Everybody is respectful of each other. You know, they're talking smack with, you know, their friends and stuff. And, and that's fine. Like, God, I remember when the community used to seem so toxic back in like the 2010s. Like I was friends with a couple people, but God, like even the Mr. Douchebag guy was talking. I remember going to locals in St. Augustine one day and I walked in. He goes, yeah, Avery, you're going to lose. I'm going to piss on your dreams and take the box. Like who needs that in their life? Like. That player doesn't even play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. I don't even know where they're at in life anymore. But it, it goes to show how toxic some people can be. And I don't want that in this game. I don't want that in my community. I don't want that when I go to an event. When I go to an event, I want to be able to just sit down across from my opponent, not have them looking like a fucking Momo with a hat and a hoodie on top like they got dressed in the dark. Don't dress like that when you go out in public. You look like a Momo. I'm sorry, but that's a pet peeve of mine. It's so annoying. You don't look intimidating. You look like an idiot. <laughs> But I just want to be able to sit across the table, have a casual conversation, get to know the person. Hey, man, where'd you come from? I came from Kentucky. Oh, damn, you're all the way out in Florida. Hey, man, happy to have you here. Be sure to go check out Disney. Hey, check out my YouTube channel. Shameless plug. Hey, it was nice meeting you, man. Good game. That's what I want. I don't want some Momo with a hat and a hoodie on their head with a Max Rarity Fiendsmith U Bell pile. And then they get salty when I 2-0 them with Tempi or something, just as an example. Look, guys. This is just my thoughts from someone who's a veteran in the game, who's a dinosaur in the game, and I hope that people don't get too angry about this video, and I hope that you know we can have a civil conversation in the comments and come to a consensus on what would be best for the game. You know, as much as I joke and be an entertainer on YouTube and you know say all these things about how the game is dying and it's dog water and whatever, I want to see the game succeed. You know, that's the entertainer side of me. The Yu-Gi-Oh player in me says I want to see this game succeed. Because it's done a lot for my life. I've been able to bond with my dad over this game. We've been playing this game since I was a kid. I have so many great memories with my dad. Going to events and meeting friends and having these hilarious memories. I never would have met Big Bruce 94 had it not been for Yu-Gi-Oh! And now he's like a brother from another mother. We've been able to reconnect. We've been able to go to events. We've been able to laugh at professional pillow fighting sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Who can say that they watch that in their hotel in Indianapolis? Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.